On the evening of February 19th at the Hamar Olympic Amphitheater, more than 6,000 spectators were on hand to witness the men's free skating competition that would decide the gold, silver, and bronze medals. Two days earlier, when the short program was contested, the battle for top honors was expected to be between America's Brian Boitano, the 1988 Calgary winner, and Viktor Petrenko of the Ukraine, the gold medalist from Alberville two years ago. Both performed poorly in the short program. Bortano finishing eighth. And Petrenko ninth. As the four-and-a-half-minute freestyle program was underway, Boitano and Petrenko both knew they were competing for personal pride rather than medals. With no chance of reaching the victory podium, Boitano performed as the champion he was known to be. He moved from eighth to sixth place. Petrenko was even more impressive. he was the Petrenko of old, moving from ninth to fourth place. Nevertheless, they would have to watch from the sidelines as the young would replace the old. Philippe Candeloro of France won the bronze. Elvis Stoiko of Canada, the silver. And Alexei Yermanov of Russia, the gold the same positions they held going into this final. But as the award platform ceremony signals the end of the men's competition, the Olympic involvement of Viktor Petrenko is not yet over. For now, he would turn his attention to the women's competition still four days away and the fortunes of his protege, Oksana Bayul of the Ukraine. Galina Zimayevskaya has been the coach of Viktor Petrenko for more than eight years. Petrenko is married to her oldest daughter, Nina. Zimayevskaya is also the coach of 16-year-old Oksana Bayul, the 1993 women's figure skating world champion and one of the favorites to win the gold medal in Lillehammer. Zimayevskaya has been training Oksana Bayul for two years taking over from her former coach in 1992, when Oksana was 14. This is Stanislav Koritek, who emigrated from Dnepropetrovsk in the Ukraine to Canada after coaching Oksana for nine years since she was a child of five. Oksana started her figure skating at small rink at, at the Dnepropetrovsk. Kids started from uh, four years to learn how to skate. And I had 10 kids, and one of them was Oksana. And it was a uh, little girl, a uh, really cute uh, little girl. And she always was too serious. And during the whole nine years when I worked, she was the most talented uh, girl. Oksana Bayul's life has been filled with tragedy. She never knew her father, who left their home when she was a small child. Her grandparents, who helped bring her up, both died as she was growing up. And her mother died of cancer when Oksana was 13. The following year, Stanislav Koritek moved to Canada with the hope of taking Oksana with him. I thought maybe I can find some much better environment for work. 
in Canada and maybe I can bring uh, Oksana with me. Just finally I realized it's not so easy. I decide it can be much better for her if she will uh, stay in group of Galina. At that time, I think that was the best decision for her. When Stanislav Karitek suggested that I coach Oksana, I was not excited at first. I don't like to work with someone else's student. I like to prepare them from the beginning. It is like a housewife cooking her borscht without outside help. She also had no place to live, and I have a small home with two children. But Viktor Petrenko had been helping her for years, and he said to me, she is such a small girl, how much can she cost? How much can she eat? When she find out uh, about the Oksana story, without any question, she uh, take her home and give her everything what she need for, for life. I was giving her everything what she need for the practice and let's say the skates, blades and boots for the skating, you know, fabric for making a costume, you know. Also I give her some money to leave. Galina and Victor mean everything to me. They not only coach me, they are my family. I do not know why I have been so fortunate to have those two. Nobody else in the world would do for me what they have done. Oksana Bayou has been compared to the legendary Sonja Henny of Norway, the only female skater to ever win three individual Olympic gold medals. The comparison with Sonja Henny is evident. Henny won her first gold medal at age 15. Oksana Bayou her first world championship at 15 and both have charismatic grace on the ice. Movements that have enchanted their fans worldwide. Even more, they have captivated the judges. Their personalities often the difference between victory and defeat. The dramatic story of Oksana Bayul reached its climax on the evening of February 25th, when the women's free skating final was scheduled. She was in second place, within striking distance of the leader, Nancy Kerrigan of the United States. For weeks preceding the Lillehammer Olympics, the world was mesmerized by the daily reports implicating Tonya Harding in the attack that injured Nancy Kerrigan's knee shortly before the Olympic trials. In the following weeks, Kerrigan and Harding were uncertain whether they would skate at the Olympics. Kerrigan recovered and was named to the team. In a series of legal maneuvers, Harding too was permitted to skate. But a day before the women's free skating final, another dramatic happening. In a practice session, Oksana Bayul collided with another skater, receiving severe injuries to her right leg and back. I did not pay much attention to Nancy and Tonya. It was their problem, and they had resolved their own problems. I could not concern myself with them, for I had an injury also in a practice session, right before the free skating final. No, you cannot let outside influences affect your performance. Now in the final night of the women's competition, 24 skaters will take the ice in four groups of six. One of those in the second to last group is Tonya Harding, who was 10th after the technical program two days earlier. Harding's introduction is received courteously by the audience, who are unaware that before stepping onto the ice, she had a problem with her skate. Her first maneuver, a triple lutz. She fails badly. After a few moments, Harding abruptly stops. It appears she will not continue. However, she appeals to the referee that her shoelace is broken and requests a change before going on. 
it is granted. Harding is given a reskate. She would end up in eighth place. Now it was time for the final six. This group will include all the potential medal winners. Chen Lu of China, fourth after the technical program, trails Kerrigan, Bayoul, and Surya Bonadi of France. All three leaders will skate after Chen Lu. Chen Lu skates well and has a chance for a medal. But now it is time for Nancy Kerrigan, the leader after the first day. Nancy Kerrigan will skate to a medley of tunes by Neil Diamond. Kerrigan won the bronze medal in Alberville two years ago and followed that by becoming the 1993 United States champion. But she failed to win a medal at the 1993 World Championships, won by Oksana Bayul. Her first jump, a triple flip. She does a double instead of a triple. One of the highlights of her program, a triple combination. After her attack before the Olympic trials, it was not certain whether she would make it to Lillehammer, but the United States Figure Skating Association sanctioned her admission to the team after Kerrigan proved that she had overcome her injury in a special tryout. Nancy Kerrigan is trying to become the successor to Christy Yamaguchi of the United States, who won the gold in Albertville. Kerrigan finished third. As the program goes on, Kerrigan performs brilliantly. It is evident she will silence forever the critics who questioned her ability to perform under extreme pressure. is now going into the final section of her program. To many, it is a gold medal performance. Nancy Kerrigan has performed magnificently. She is given high marks both for technical merit and artistic impression. All nine judges place her first in the standings. But there is still room for Roxana Bayul to win the gold medal. I remember my name being announced, and I waited for my music to start. I had to concentrate. But the children with the flowers were skating to give them to Nancy Kerrigan. So I had to wait before I could begin the program. For anybody else, this delay would break their concentration. But Oksana is so determined, of such strong will, that I knew it wouldn't affect her. Even when the girls came back to pick up some of the flowers that fell on the ice. Oksana Bayul will skate to a series of Broadway show tunes. Galina and Oksana know that her first jump is the most critical. For earlier, Oksana, with the approval of the International Olympic Committee, received pain-killing injections for her leg and back injuries. Three stitches were needed to close her leg wound. Her first jump, a triple Lutz, 
the first of five triples she is scheduled to perform. she will attempt the triple flip. The same jump Nancy Kerrigan changed to a double. A slight mistake, she lands on both feet. In the history of women's figure skating, Soviet skaters had dominated the pair's competition. But no Soviet female skater had ever won an individual gold medal. I was praying to God that she would have the strength to finish. Watching her perform, I was so proud. She was so full of stress, the injections, her back injury. I then realized what she was going through was only our secret. There are nine judges officiating the competition. They will give separate scores for technical merit and artistic performance. The short program, two evenings ago, accounts for one-third of the score. Tonight's freestyle is worth two-thirds. With 15 seconds of her program left, Oksana Bayul makes a momentous decision. She is not certain that her performance will give her the gold medal. She decides to add the triple toe loop. Oksana Bayul is practically flawless. The decision of the judges will be a close one. When I finished, I was so relieved. I had skated so well, despite my injuries. When I was coming to the end of the program, I thought to myself, why not? Why not try it? So I added the triple toe loop. It was a big surprise for me what she did. I never know what she is going to do. But she is so talented. It is a nice problem for me. Oksana Bayul and Galina Zinievskaya await the scores. Oksana couldn't stop crying. We didn't know whether she was first or second. We didn't know how she was going to be judged. Finally, the scores are posted. First, technical merit. followed by artistic impression. The final tabulation is almost impossible to comprehend. Of the nine judges, four gave their first place votes to Kerrigan, four to Bayou. The ninth judge from Germany called it a tie, but by the rules, ties are broken by the skater with the highest artistic score. The German judge gives Oksana Bayou a 5.9. Earlier, he had given Nancy Kerrigan a 5.8. Oksana Bayul now has five first place votes to Kerrigan's four and moves into first place. The battle for the medals is still on. Surya Bonali of France goes into the free skating competition in third place. When the program is over, she finishes in fourth behind Chen Lu of China. Now one of the poignant moments of the competition the final skater on the evening's program. Two-time Olympic gold medal winner, Katarina Witt of Germany. She is greeted as a reigning queen. Before the competition began, Katarina Witt recognized that she had little chance of returning to the victory platform. Her reasons for making the attempt, she said, I wanted to share the Olympic experience just one more time.
Her program is a message of peace and a tribute to the long-suffering people of Sarajevo, the scene of the 1984 Winter Olympics. The song, Where Have All the Flowers Gone? Competition, the young had replaced the old. Katerina finishes in seventh place. The victory award ceremony takes place. Sixteen-year-old Oksana Bayul of the Ukraine stands on the top step. Beside her, Nancy Kerrigan of the United States, second. And Chen Lu, China, third. Standing on the victory platform, Oksana Bayul's thoughts turn to Victor and Galina. Her words, to achieve great things in life with the help of others, one can overcome the sadness of the past. There is one more honor for Oksana Bayul. Because of her, for the first time in Olympic history, the Ukrainian national anthem is being played. Thank you. 